Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Jaworski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In this ninth video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on the Drupal Commerce module, I want to introduce you to how we can create events and event registrations using Commerce and have people pay for their attendance uh, through the Commerce module. Now, before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at Toronto Website Developer.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series. Uh, this one will be available as soon as I complete it. Each video is only $20, and the more you buy, the more you save. Uh, as you'll see here, you save a percentage uh, for each additional video tutorial that you purchase. Um, those sales help to continue to help allow me to develop these tutorials, keep them free, keep them frequent on YouTube. Um, however, if you're not able to purchase one, uh, but you do want to give back, please just leave a, a comment. Let me know how this is helping you out, or give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. All three of those are metrics that YouTube uses to help promote these video tutorials. So I greatly appreciate all the help and support um, from everybody that's purchased tutorials as well as left comments. Uh, it means a lot. Now, we're going to go over to drupal.org slash project slash registration. And this is the first module we're going to grab. You'll notice down here that I'm using 7.x 1.3 at the time of recording. Um, just want to make you aware of that in case things change. You're also going to go over to project, well, drupal.org slash project slash commerce underscore registration, and you're going to grab the 7.x 2.0, uh, well, whatever version is there, but I'm using beta 5, um, and that's of 2013, March 05. Now, with those available, you can go ahead and enable them. I use Drush, so I'll just clear here and just do a Drush enable, and you can just do a dash Y commerce registration and when you do that it'll enable it'll pick up the dependency for registration and you'll be good to go you'll also note that it will flag two uh, or rather sorry not two it will flag the fact that you have added permissions and you'll need to configure those so we'll walk you through those as well now with um, uh, setting up commerce products you'll notice that it was a bit convoluted you know we had to set up the product type we had to set up the product and we had to set up a product display Unfortunately, doing registration is taking that one step further. So we're going to do all of those steps, but we're also going to first set up registrations themselves. So you'll see here I've got registrations. Um, this isn't the actual right spot for the menu. It should be in store, but mine's a little bit broken. So what I'm actually looking for is structure registration here. And so this comes from the register registration uh, module. And first thing we're going to look at is registration states. So here you'll see there are three states that come default with registration. Uh, we're just going to use those. I don't need to change them up. But the key here is that only one of them is active and is default. So anytime you create a registration, uh, it will automatically be complete. And so that is a problem if you don't fix this, because when somebody goes to create an order, it will create the registration. It will automatically compete it. If they cancel the order, their registration will still be there, and it'll still look like they're going to come to your event. So you want to make sure that you uh, enable whatever uh, um, state you're going to use and then make sure that de pending is the default. Let's go ahead and save that configuration. With that set up, we can go over to products and create a product type. So I'm going to create a uh, workshop product type. Actually, sorry, registration product type. And so I'm going to save and add fields. And I realized I skipped a step, so we'll have to come back to something. But here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just add a field here, which is called the registration. And this is going to be a registration type field. Uh, that's what we just created. So registration type. We'll go ahead and save this. This is going to be a required field whenever we're setting up any type of this product. Um, default is going to be enabled. These are all the default registration settings. Um, these are all settings that you can customize per product that you create. So we'll just leave them um, all blank here. The capacity is zero, which means it's unlimited. Uh, we don't have default scheduling. We don't have a default reminder. Um, and the space is allowed one per person. Uh, you'll see here the uh, allowed multiple registrations is checked off, which gives us that. Now, what I forgot to do was uh, show you how we actually create a workshop registration. So I, I'm just going to enable that and I'll walk you through it in a minute. Let's go ahead and save this. So now we have our, our product type set up. What I forgot to show you was under structure, registration, registration types. Um, here, you'll notice I've already got one set up. Uh, these uh, registrations are entities in Drupal 7. And so if you know what an entity is, you know that uh, entities have bundles. Essentially, it's a, it's a type of content, and type of content has different subclasses within it. 
Uh, don't worry if you don't know anything about entities, bundles, it really doesn't matter. The key thing here is that you can have multiple types of, of um, registrations and each one can have its own set of fields. So here under workshop registration, if I go to manage fields, I can add a, um, a lunch preference. And so this will just be a list of text that uh, when a user signs up for this specific type of event, they will have to enter what they want for lunch. Right, and I apologize to all those in between those two spectrums. Um, so yeah, you're only allowed one selection. And now anytime you register for a workshop, you have to tell me what you want for lunch. So let's go back and we're gonna add a product. We're gonna create a registration and this is going to be called uh, workshop registration. And it's going to be $50 to attend my workshop. And you'll see the defaults to workshop registration here. I save this product. I can actually go back and edit it. And now I have the ability to set the, uh, the registration settings for this specific type of product. So here, I only want 50 people attending my workshops. Uh, opening, closing, doesn't really matter. Uh, send reminder, I could do it. Uh, enter in my date. And the cool thing about the template here, Ah, if you have token enabled, let's let's do that quickly here. You can see here now with tokens, I can actually choose and make a dynamic email. So you know I can say hi, whatever the person's name is. Uh, you, you know you're scheduled to attend such and such and such such a date, um, and it'll all be available here with time uh, tokens. So it'll be a dynamic email, um, and that's it. So we can just go ahead and save that product. So now we have the workshop registration. Um, we have our product, don't have a display for a product. What I'd like to do is go to structure content types and add a content type. And so this is gonna be a workshop content type. I can go ahead and save and add fields. And I'm gonna link my product to it. So let's just go to register here. And this is gonna be a product reference and autocomplete because I'm always gonna know the name that I wanna use. We'll save settings here, it's gonna be required. And I'm only linking registrations to this and default number of values is going to be one. So we'll go ahead and save these settings. Now, last step, we have to go ahead and actually create a workshop. So I'm going to call this Pete's workshop. Uh, get ready to learn. Right. And we're going to just tie this to the workshop registration. I can go ahead and save this. And now you'll see that I've got this nice workshop, but I've got this ugly registration and register here. So let's fix that. Under content types workshop, I can go to manage display. And I'm just going to get rid of this label for register. That's what we were seeing there. And then under my products, our types, registration, again, manage display. I'm just going to get rid of this label here. And go ahead and save that. And now if I go back to my home page, and I go to Pete's workshop, you can see here, $50, get ready to learn, add to cart, right? So there we go. I can look, now I'm going to add my cart. I can go ahead and I can check out. So when I go to check out, uh, you'll see here I get this registration is for myself, right? And then my lunch preference, here's what we set up. We choose vegetarian, we can go to the next step. And now I'm into my actual checkout. You can see I've got my $50 um, registration here. And I'm going to go with Peter, yeah, I'm in Algeria, whatever. Go ahead and continue to the next step. Now you'll see it's actually gone ahead and created a registration. So if I go over to registrations here, which actually should be under your store, mine's broken. I go to all registrations and you'll see here that I'm in uh, review checkout and my status is pending because that's what we set up. Now, um, what you might've noticed is I'm, I'm using a site local host here um, that does not look like the site that we've built throughout this entire video tutorial series. And that's because it was having a lot of problems getting the registration state to go to complete it. Um, you'll notice here under configuration workflow rules that um, the commerce registration will come with two rules. First is a set registration is depending upon order completion. Um, that was a bit of frustration for me. So I just disabled it. Um, and we have, um, we have registrations defaulted uh, in the settings themselves already. But then here, um, where are we here? Set registrations to complete upon full payment. I wasn't getting this hook fired for whatever reason. Um, I would submit a payment, and I'm not sure it's because I'm using example payment or what, but this hook would just not fire. And as a result, 
um, registrations wouldn't be set to complete. So what I did was I created a rule myself, enable registration when order is complete. And you'll see here, um, after updating existing order, so when order goes to a completed status, that's what this is here, data comparison, checking the order status, if it's equal to completed, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna update the registration that's associated with this order and put it to complete. So I went ahead and I created that rule myself. Um, if you're not sure kind of what I mean or what I did, you can always just shoot a question off on YouTube and I'll try to get back to you. But um, essentially with that in place, now when I go to review my order, if I go ahead and just type in, you know, test here for my example payment, continue to the next step. You'll see that I can go and I can look at my order. So here's my actual order. And I've got my, uh, my workshop and I've got my status pending. And the reason why it's pending and not completed after all I just said to you, is because my order status is pending. So if I edit this order status and I put this to complete, save the order, now I can go to registrations and you'll see that my registration is now complete. I am registered and ready to go for this workshop. And if you do all registrations, you'll see that uh, there are no pending ones, it's just mine. And so when you click on, um, sorry, I didn't want to click on that. When you go to the actual workshop node itself, Hmm. You should have a tab here that allows you to, to look at the workshops themselves. So we should figure out why that's not there. Find the registrations. And so I just went and quickly uh, flush caches here, which uh, fixed my menu. So now you can see I've got managed registrations here. And that's, so it's just a, a menu setting thing. Um, and so here you can see I've got my, my complete state, um, one registration, and I can go into my settings here and you can see here's the actual settings for this uh, actual event. So if I want to edit them there instead of within the product, and you can see that you've got this nice ability to email the registrants. Uh, so you can go ahead and hit all registrants or just those for the specific workshop registration, um, provide a comment, provide a message, uh, and as well, you've got tokens available to you. Um, so that's it for this this video tutorial. Um, just to, as a quick recap, because I know we covered a lot and we did it fast. Um, we went ahead, we got the registration module, we got registration uh, or the commerce registration module as well. So the two different modules, uh, we enabled them both. Went ahead and first set up the states and the registration type for the registration module itself. And so that was under structure registration. Then we went ahead and we went to store products and we added a new product type, which is registration. And so there we were able to link that to the registration that we had just created. Next, we went ahead and we created a new product, which was our, our workshop product. And so we were able to configure, you know, when does this product open? When does it close? That kind of thing. Uh, from there, we created a new content type, uh, which was actually for our uh, workshops themselves. And so we linked those to the products that we were creating. And then lastly, we actually created a workshop, um, you know, Pete's workshop, and we allowed um, people to register for that. The, to note here, um, one thing I didn't show you, which I should test with you. So um, as I mentioned, registration has some permissions and hopefully nobody closed the video already because one thing you're gonna need to do is, you'll see all the types here. Each, each type that you create uh, of workshops, each bundle, Will have its own permissions as well right so view your own registrations we want authenticated users to see that create new registrations we want anonymous users to be able to do that because anonymous users are going to be attending our events and then so edit will only be authenticated and down here the gotcha is going to be register other people so this is going to be anonymous as well as other accounts so we'll save this permission and now you'll see when we go localhost commerce Pete's workshop, add to cart, it was added to the cart. Go ahead and check out, and you can see this registration is for another account, another person. Another account is actually a user on this site. Another person is actually somebody else. So perhaps we don't want to do accounts. We just want to allow them to just do another person. So if we take this off here, I'm going to actually show you what this would be like if we didn't have permission to do this. So let's just go back to the home page, Pete's workshop add this to the cart, you're going to see you're not available to do it. 
So let's go back here. Let's go registration. And let's just go register other people and save that. And now you'll see here, we can add it to the cart. You can look at this. So we've got two in here. We can go ahead and check out. And you'll see that you get two different registrations here. You're going to enter in. So peter at peter.com, vegetarian test at test.com. And it's going to be no preference. Continue the next step. And you'll see here we've got two. And then we're going to actually set up our own uh, account here at um, test.com, right? Peter. Continue next step. And you'll see I've got registration one, registration two, 100 bucks, default payment. We'll go ahead and test that. Right? We just sent the order. Now, if I go back and we go to my store, again, you would automate this, right? But uh, just for the sake that I was having trouble, I, I did not. So you would save this order because I would pay it in full, right? It's all paid in full. Um, and then when you go back to your content and you can look at your workshop, manage the registrations, you can see that we've got three different ones, right? And we don't have a user tied to these because this was another um, person they were registering. So that was what was happening there. Um, I think that's it. I think I think that's it for registrations. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I know it seems pretty cumbersome, but um, um, once you get the hang of it, you, it'll kind of you'll settle into it and you'll know exactly what you're doing. It's not too bad. So again, if you have any uh, any questions, any troubles, please reach out on YouTube. Let me know. Uh, I prefer the comments because that way anybody uh, who might have a similar problem will see your comment and can uh, can benefit from the knowledge of that interaction rather than you trying to come to the website and just submitting the web form by itself. It's a lot harder for me to respond to those. So thanks very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Again, if this video tutorial helped you, please leave me a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment on YouTube, subscribe to my channel, or better yet, uh, pop on over and purchase the video tutorial series. Thanks very much for watching.